Hello there again. Uh, we're here to talk about a concept today called risk on, risk off, R-O-R-O, RORO. Uh, now, this is something that's rarely mentioned among the uh, trading community, especially the retail traders. Uh, this involves uh, mostly newbie traders. And let me tell you that if you don't know this, you're really going to be running around all over the place in Forex, you know, trying this indicator, that indicator, this chart, that chart, and still finding a lot of your stop losses hit. Now, I do hope you have a stop loss here. <clears throat> now, the market really cycles among risk on or risk off. If you watch Bloomberg TV, you're going to hear them saying, you know, this is a risk on day or risk off day. And depending on what they say, uh, you've got to do certain things. And that's what we're going to describe today in this presentation. Now, risk on, risk off is a concept that was introduced uh, during the 2009 crisis by HSBC, and it has stuck since then. But before we delve into the details of risk on, risk off, let's just go over again uh, my uh, concept and strategies for trading. Now, uh, here I am on the right side there. You see this book by Mario Singh. He is uh, Asia's number one Forex coach. You can get your free copy there at www.gogokaching.com. It's a US $29 value. Just go get it. Now, in this book, Mario tells us about the importance of uh, being uh, fundamentally driven and technical execution. So before you even talk about going into the market, what you need to do is have your fundamentals right. You got to know the overall big picture of the market. It's like going to the charts. You know, you go to the weekly chart, daily chart, and then you go to the hourly chart and uh, maybe even 15 minute chart if you're ready to uh, go into your entry. Now. What I'm going to introduce here is in the uh, middle there, before the fundamental and technical, there's something called intermarket analysis. This is where you need to know that even if you're trading Forex, you need to know what's happening with equities, with commodities, with uh, the treasury bonds, and, and all of that in order to make a very high probability decision when you are entering your trades. Now, uh, this is what I call the RORO filter in the middle. You got to know what the market is doing, where the market is going towards, and only then do you uh, apply the technical entry. If the technicals look good, but the RORO filter tells you something else, I'd rather not do it. And we're going to talk about this afterwards. So what is intermarket analysis? Well, this is really the relationship between different asset classes. Uh, you have stocks, indices, bonds, commodities, and foreign currencies. Now, let me tell you that the movement of stocks, bonds, and commodities do affect foreign currencies. And if you're good at looking at charts, in order to predict the direction of the currencies, you could even be looking at the stock indices because they do move in tandem. Uh, especially the pairs that are highly correlated to the movement in the stock markets. For example, the USD Yen pair, USD JPY. And intermarket analysis is so important because it identifies the economic trends, investment cycles, and sector and risk rotation. Now, this year, because of the problems in oil, you see a lot of times that the S&P 500 can move really, really huge uh, once the oil and uh, gas sectors uh, have good news about it. You know, if oil's going up, money's pouring into the sector and suddenly you have the S&P 500 going up. And this will affect the Forex pairs. For example, the USD Canadian pair, the Looney, which is uh, directly correlated to oil. Uh, now, intermarket analysis also confirms other analysis methods and reveals fundamental turning points. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking at oil and suddenly oil goes down uh, despite the markets uh, going the other way, uh, then I would suggest that you might even want to uh, short the USD Canadian dollar pair because you know that the Canadian dollar will likely go up if oil goes, uh, no, will go up if oil goes up and the Canadian dollar pair will go down if uh, oil goes uh, down. Okay, uh, here are some correlations that I often see in the market. Uh, for example, uh, commodities we know like gold and, uh, you know, dairy products and uh, oil is priced in U.S. dollars. So uh, commodities go up when the U.S. dollar goes down. Now, we know that during periods of expanding economy, countries will buy commodities in order to produce 
uh, parts or to produce a manufacturing output. So a commodity upcycle could also signal the economy expanding and this is very good for stock markets. We also know that uh, rising bond markets are not good for interest rates. Interest rate goes up and bond markets go down. So uh, rising bond markets and lowering of interest rates are actually good for the stock markets. Now in 2015, uh, we saw the breakdown of oil and really this has continued over to 2016. So oil is very correlated to the stock markets. Now this could change. So uh, what we see in 2016 is oil goes up, the stock market goes up. Oil goes down, the stock market goes down. And uh, this is easily understandable because look, when oil companies, uh, oil goes down and oil company earnings turn for the worse, uh, oil stocks go down, they bring the S&P 500 down. Uh, similarly, as uh, oil companies face default, guess what happens? They can't borrow their bank payments. You know, they can't pay money back to the banks. The banks go down, so the S&P 500 also goes down. And this is what you need to understand. And another uh, factor that we see in 2016 is uh, because of this fear of the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, raising interest rates, you see a situation where bad economic news is actually good for the stock market because bad economic news means that the U.S. will unlikely increase the interest rate. And that's really good for the stock market. An interest rate rise is bad for the stock markets in general. Uh, so let's go back to Roro here. Uh, let me go back here. So you have risk on and uh, risk off there. Now, during a risk on mode, you know, everything is fine. People want to invest in the stock markets. People are bullish about the stock markets. They're buying commodities. They're buying uh, emerging market currencies and commodity currencies like the Aussie, the CAD, the New Zealand dollar. And also, you know, you, you even see Brazilian real, you know, Malaysian ringgit. All these are bought during a period of risk on because people are happy about where the markets are going. Now, during uh, periods of risk off, this is when the markets start to go down. There's a lot of uh, fear in the market, you know? If risk on is uh, characterized by greed, then risk off is characterized by fear. And uh, people, when they, they want to sell the stock market, so they need somewhere to park their money uh, that they take out of the stock market. And this is where you see that people put money into uh, the U.S. Treasuries, the uh, Japanese Yen, uh, even the Euro and even gold. You know, gold is known as a safe haven when uh, things uh, go bad in the markets. Now, you see things going bad in the markets. If you look at the volatility index, it's called VIX. You can find it on uh, Yahoo Finance. And usually a period of high volatility is characterized by the VIX going uh, over 25. So you really got to understand this, that once the markets are turning bearish, people run away to safe haven assets. And uh, the effect of risk on risk off here is really greater asset correlation between the global stock markets, high volatility, and also asset classes such as foreign currencies. So understanding of risk on risk off really simplifies our job because it allows us to trade Forex in a much better way. And uh, when you're doing this, what you need to do is essentially cross the pairs. Now, I put here a bunch of risk-off currencies on the right there where people run to whenever there is a bad situation in the market, when the markets are uh, throwing its tantrum and going down. Now, the number one of all these safe haven assets is actually, hey, it's up there, it's the Japanese yen. So the yen tends to go up when the market goes down. Uh, also, you see uh, people flocking to the U.S. dollar. You see the U.S. dollar going up. You see gold going up due to its safe haven status. Now, uh, as recently as last year, after the euro was effectively devalued due to quantitative easing, uh, because it's such a low-yielding currency, uh, you see the euro also going up whenever there is a situation of risk off. And if you look at the assets on the right, these are really uh, low-yielding uh, assets. Gold doesn't pay any interest. Hey, the Japanese yen uh, is not paying interest, even going to negative interest rates. But people want to put their money there because people know that, investors know that uh, in a period of market turmoil, uh, you know, nothing's really going to happen to the yen. It's such a stable currency and that's a good place to park your money uh, and moving it out of the markets when uh, things go haywire. Now, 
when the markets are moving up and we're a little bit, we are a little bit greedy, this is where the uh, risk on comes in. And this is where we'd like to invest in assets such as the uh, commodity currency, for example, the Aussie dollar, the Kiwi dollar, the CAD, uh, because uh, you know these economies are uh, expanding, the stock markets are going up. Uh, even the British pound could be considered as a risk on currency. We now know that through correlation, whenever the markets go up, oil also tends to go up. Yes, oil moves together with the markets. So these are the assets that uh, we put money in whenever the market is going up. So here's how it works. Uh, let's say we're in a risk-off situation. Now, in a risk-off situation, all you need to do, if you know what to trade, you know, you have to buy the assets on the right and sell the assets on the left. So in a risk-off situation, we would have to buy the Japanese yen against the assets on the left. So we'd have to buy the Japanese yen against the Aussie. Now, since there is no such thing as a JPYAUD pair, what we will do then during risk-off situation is we're going to sell the Aussie dollar versus the Japanese yen or AUD JPY. Similarly, when, in, when we are in a risk-on situation, what we're going to do is going to buy the Aussie against the Japanese yen, AUD JPY. Now, here's another example. Uh, the markets are going down again. We see the euro uh, going up with the Aussie going down. So what you could do, again, match the one with the right to the left. What you do now during the markets going down is you're going to buy the Euro AUD pair. And when the markets are going up again, you would sell the Euro AUD pair. Now you're going to ask, well, okay, fine, but how do we match the right and right? Well, uh, because the uh, Japanese yen is really the king of safe haven, whenever the markets go down, you'd want to be selling the USD JPY pair. Whenever the markets go up, you'd be buying the USD uh, JPY pair, USD yen. So that's the uh, lecture now about risk on risk off. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and understand it, and I hope that this makes you a better trader. Uh, goodbye for now.